Hello everybody and welcome back to The Sanctuary. I'm your host Professor C and we're going to do some more A&P. Specifically we're going to look at bones again but we're going to go and focus in on the occipital bone today. Let's do it. Okay so the occipital bone just to remind ourselves is the bone here at the back of the skull and it creeps along here and disappears behind some of the structures of the temporal bone. So not only does it form the back of the skull, but it forms pretty much most of the base of the skull, the very, very underside of it. Can't see it from this image, so we're going to check out the occipital bone from several different aspects so we can get a clear picture of what occipital bone looks like. The root occipio, uh, and other forms of it from the Latin language have something to do with the word for beginning. So this is the I begin bone. And why would it be called that? Well, when you're born, the natural way, the first part of you that comes out into the world is the back of your head. All right, we've got a couple of images here. I'll show the muscle one in a moment. But let's just look at the brown bone and I'll kind of outline it real quick. In red, there's the occipital bone. Again, it forms the back of the skull, but it forms a lot of the base of the skull here, too. All right, the foramen magnum is pretty dang easy. It's the, if you translate it, it stands for, you know, whole big, right? The big hole. So the foramen magnum, I put an FM here inside of it. The foramen magnum is the landmark where we have inside of the skull, we would have the brain stem. And then beyond that frame and magnum on the outside would have what's called the spinal cord. It's the same structure, but it gets a different name once it exits the frame and magnum. On either side of the frame and magnum, let me change my color to white here so it might stand out a little better. I'll put OC, OC. For occipital condyles, these lumpy things here at the base of the skull. A condyle, when you see the word condyle, a condyle will always tell you that it will be articulating with another bone. So the only bone, of course, that that could articulate with is one of the vertebral bones. And it does articulate with what's called C1, the first cervical vertebra, which we'll see in another talk on the bones. So the condyle tells you it articulates because this is, honestly, this is the only place in the skull where a bony process touches another bone. This is it. This is the only part of the, the skull that touches the vertebral column is at the occipital condyles. If you look right behind each of the condyles, I guess posterior to the condyles, these little tiny holes, remember foramen's a hole, so those are called simply the condylar foramina is the plural for foramen. And I see the two condylar foramina just posterior to the two occipital condyles. Now, hypoglossal canal, this one is tricky. Let me go to yellow here. If you could look underneath the occipital condyles, and I'll draw an arrow like this all the way through, and I can do it on the other side as well. If you could tilt that skull you would see a hole here, a tunnel running underneath the occipital condyles, right flanking the foramen magnum. These are the two hypoglossal canals. It's going to be a structure that called the hypoglossal nerve. Hypoglossal refers to under the tongue. We'll get back to that in another talk. But those two tunnels that go underneath the occipital condyles, not posterior to them, but underneath them, in this aspect are called the hypoglossal canals there in yellow. Now if you look at the more the the back of the skull if you will you'll see some lines. So here is a nice ridge of bone, here is a nice ridge of bone, and up here is a nice ridge of bone. Well the one closest to the frame and magnum, that ridge of bone, is referred to as the inferior nuchal line. Nuchal, nuchal. The one well, let's just draw an eye here. There's the inferior nuchal line. This one is the superior nuchal line. And then the one beyond it, I'll just put SM. I don't know the abbreviation for supreme without looking like superior. There's the supreme 
nuchal line. Now the nuchal line is where a lot of the neck muscles will attach. And in this picture over here that I've shown some of these muscles attaching at the back of the skull that help pull your neck backwards, uh, those are situated at the inferior, superior, or supreme nuchal lines. Pharyngeal tubercle, <clears throat> let's go back to a yellow color. Pharyngeal tubercle is right here in this aspect, or I guess in any aspect, it would be anterior to the foramen magnum. And the pharyngeal word refers to the pharynx or the muscular throat. So muscles of the throat will attach at the pharyngeal tubercle to allow you to swallow and talk, and things we'll talk about in much further lectures down the road. External occipital crest, and I can do this in white, hopefully. So go back here to the foramen magnum and do this, and that white box I've just drawn there, that's called the external occipital crest. And right here, where it slams into one of those superior supreme nuchal lines, that's called the external occipital protuberance. And protuberance, the word tuber means potato. A protuberance just means like a lump that looks like a potato that's bulging out of the bone. Okay, let's take a look inside. Uh, removing the calvarium, right? Take the calvarium off. This, of course, the bone in brown is the occipital bone. Easy to spot because we can see the foramen magnum and the white showing through it pretty simply. So from this aspect, we can see an internal crest, which is right here, and it's going to stop a little short right there. So there's the internal crest and the internal protuberance, almost in the exact same spot as the external structures. If I could remind you that a fossa is a basin, kind of like a thumbprint. I can see two nice little basins pushed into the bone here. And who will fit in there but the very back part of the brain called the cerebellum. So the two lobes of the cerebellum will fit into the cerebellar fossae, the two indentions there. If you go a little further out, you can see two other basins right here. And these are for the bigger part of the brain called the cerebrum. So those are called the cerebral fossae. So there's four uh, depressions back there that are situated around the internal occipital protuberance. They all are initialized CF, which makes them a little tricky, but the ones closest to the foramen magnum are the cerebellars, and the ones further away from the foramen magnum are the cerebral fossae. Okay, if I could draw in yellow here, let's change over to yellow. If I could go here, and I see this ridge of bone right there, this is called the groove for the transverse sinus, all right? And if I went the perpendicular to that here, that's the groove for the sagittal sinus, something we'll talk about in lectures again further down the road. All right, if you enjoyed watching that occipital talk, thanks for making it to the end. Check out some of the other bone videos and the other stuff I got. See you next time. Bye-bye.